So if you somehow haven't heard, there's this amazing game called Cyberpunk 2077 that's coming out in November. It's gonna be this open world RPG game that takes place in a dystopian future where cyberware is everything. And if you know me, then you know this is something I've been waiting for. You mean I can make myself a cyborg, get an anime as hell motorcycle and live the futuristic sci-fi life I've always dreamed of? Take my goddamn money. But behind all the hype, there's a very interesting story within this game. A story that dates all the way back to the days of tabletop RPGs. So today on Honest Gaming History, to get you guys ready for the masterpiece to come that is Cyberpunk 2077, we're giving you the full background story of this game. How it was conceived, what created the crazy but dope world that Cyberpunk takes place in, and what you can expect plot-wise when getting into this amazing game. Doji, can you please stop writing this game? You're simping hard. Simping? For a game? How? This game is a masterpiece. It's amazing. Bro, chill. You haven't even played it yet. Oh, so I can't be hyped for a game now? What's wrong with praising a game before it- Remember Anthem? Yeah, that's what I thought. Play that intro, son. The story of cyberpunk begins with its creator, Mike Pondsmith. Inspired by the novels of Philip K. Dick and William Gibson, and the 1982 movie Blade Runner, Pondsmith created the RPG series Cyberpunk. The series started with Cyberpunk 2013, which was published in 1988. This pen and paper RPG, and to the younger viewers out there, yes, this was a thing, introduced us to the world of Night City. However, it was later expanded upon the second edition, Cyberpunk 2020, which came out two years later. Since then, the series has continued to get expanded upon over the years. However, a few of them are deemed non-canon because they fall into an alternate timeline so we won't get into those. The next title that falls canonically into the timeline is Cyberpunk Red, which is a tabletop RPG that has not officially been released yet. Then last in the series is CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077, which is the game that we are all high- Dochi? Waiting patiently for. Since this is an RPG, throughout the series, players could pick specific roles for their playthrough, just like you pick a class in like World of Warcraft. These roles range from the rocker boy, who use their voice to inspire the people, to solos, aggressive ass warrior type characters who will run up in your house and shoot you. It sounds violent as fuck, but that's the type of energy this game runs on. And in case you're wondering, the character that Keanu Reeves is playing is actually the most famous rocker boy, Johnny Silverhand. It's dead crazy how much traffic this man brought to this game, son. Nah, facts. Pulling Keanu Reeves for this project was genius. But at the same time, when I heard it, it just made sense. He just kind of fits perfectly into this type of game. Yeah, nah, I'm sure he killed the shit. But let's move on, cause you know what our audience came here for. Y'all want, want that, that motherfucking plot. plot. So the cyberpunk timeline falls in line with our actual real world timeline, up until the 90s. In 1989, the NSA, CIA, FBI, and DEA group up to form the Gang of Four, an organization whose objective is to run America behind the scenes. Bro, could you imagine this happening in real life? Bro, don't jinx it! So with the Gang of Four being a thing, under their influence, the US invades countries south of the border. And obviously, the Central American countries don't like the US trying to take over their land, so this leads to a war. This war is known as the first Central American conflict, and you know what's crazy? The US justifies this whole thing by saying it's part of their war on communism and Drugs. America be wildin'. Nah, it gets worse. In 1992, the DEA developed artificial plagues meant to put a stop to drug production. This leads to massive drug wars between the US and South American drug lords. These conflicts get so bad that the governments of Chile and Ecuador collapse. Whole governments, bro, gone. And because nobody has any type of chill in this universe, Colombian drug lords decide to bomb New York out of retaliation for what the US did. Colombian drug lords, the story just started. Chill. By the year 1994, Night City, the place where cyberpunk takes place, is founded. It's meant to act as a utopia free from crime, but that changes later in the timeline. The US gets caught fiddling with the stock market because invading countries and designing plagues wasn't enough. And because of that, the world stock market crashes. But karma is a bitch. The US breaks down thanks to the losses from the world stock market crash. So thanks to the gang of four, one in four Americans go homeless. Gang activity goes to an all new high and martial law is established. And this leads to mega corporations rising in power. By the late 90s to early 2000s, droughts and natural disasters ravage the country, and a bunch of people leave the planet altogether because everything seems to be going to shit. The net, this universe's version of the internet, is somehow created while the world continues its chaotic streak. Then a freaking food crash happens. Crops around the world go bad, but the US somehow protects themselves from this. But then, the second Central American conflict occurs, when the US tries to invade countries south of the border again. So at this point, people in the country realize that something ain't 
right. So after years of investigating, the gang of four get exposed. Order returns to America, but the mega corporations that rose up after the collapse of the US are now the powerhouses of the country. With the mega corporations in power, two violent corporate wars happen, and mobs begin their rule of Night City, thus turning into the complete opposite of what it was supposed to be. And during the time of these wars, cloning is developed, and cyberlings become more common. It's crazy how fast this world is developing, regardless of all the turmoil that's going on. Yo, facts! Whole countries are falling apart, and wars are happening everywhere. Yet scientific breakthroughs are being made that our world is still trying to figure out. Yeah, our world is looking mighty dumb right now. Anyways, near the end of the second corporate war, mega corporations managed to take Night City from the mobs that ravaged the place a few years ago. Now we get to the year 2013, when the first cyberpunk takes place. A digital virus by the name of the Soul Killer virus is developed by Alt Cunningham, a netrunner who works for the ITS Corporation. This virus is able to make a copy of someone's mind once they connect to the net. But well, one of the most important mega corporations in the story, Arasaka, wants that power. So they kidnap the Netrunner so she can recreate the virus for them. Meanwhile, Alt's boyfriend, who just so happens to be Johnny Silverhand, uses a riot in Night City as a way to break into Arasaka and save his girlfriend. Arasaka has Alt invent a version of the Soul Killer virus that kills a victim once their mind is copied. Then when Johnny tries to save her, her body is disconnected from her mind at the last minute. But thanks to her genius, her digital self is still alive on the internet. By the year 2016, a third corporate war happens because as we said, nobody in this universe has any chill. Cause another scientific breakthrough happens. At this point, Bioware starts getting sold commercially. Bioware is a type of cybernetic enhancement that improves the biological function within the body. This is where a lot of the enhancements to strength, durability, and speed come from. And now we're in 2020, where Cyberpunk 2020 takes place. At this point in the timeline, Night City is independent from the US. However, the city gets hit with a nanotech illness known as the Carbon Plague. But this plague is apparently pussy because it doesn't last for too long and just kind of stops. Then two years later, the fourth freaking corporate war happens. And this time there are two main contenders, Arasaka and the weapons manufacturer and private military contractor, Militech. Yo, it has been six goddamn years. These corporations need to chill. What is their problem? So this war sparks out of control and affects the entire world. But you guys remember the people that went to space, right? They don't like how Earth is out here being stupid. So they bomb the planet with big ass space rocks in order to claim their independence of the now named High Riders. So now international training is pretty much gone and megacorps everywhere are dying. Oh, and millions of people around the world are dead. So there's also that. Well, to add on to that death count, in 2023, Johnny Silverhand and a Militech strike team decide to raid the Isaka facility in Night City in order to get to their database. A nuke ends up going off during the raid and over half a million people die. And the craziest thing, no one knows where this nuke came from. It could have been Militech or it might've been a way for Arasaka to protect their data. So the US is like, all right, you know what? Y'all gotta chill. And they kick Arasaka out of the country, then nationalize Militech under the US military. And thanks to the damage, all these people dealt to the environment by fighting nonstop for years and dropping nukes, the sky ends up turning red. And this period is called the time of the red. A few years later, the net collapses. However, there is still something called the Ghost World that was developed by Alt Cunningham. This served as a safe haven for AI. America is also pretty much in a full dictatorship under President Elizabeth Kress. The president was getting desperate trying to rebuild the country. And this is the only way she saw fit to bring all the states back together. With Night City as crazy as it is, the country abandons it and leaves it and its people for dead. But years Years later, Night City starts getting rebuilt by megacorps and former citizens. And this is the point where Cyberpunk Red takes place. Somehow, someone finds Johnny Silverhand's body and puts it in cold storage. Throughout the following years, the net gets reestablished, orders someone returns to Night City, and Arasaka is welcomed back to the States. And that brings us to the present, the year 2077, where we meet V, the focus of Cyberpunk 2077 story. However, who is V? And what role do they play in this wild ass story? Well, what we do know is that they're an outlaw mercenary who's looking for an implant that's set to grant immortality. They're also being haunted by the digital version of Johnny Silverhand. So I'm guessing that's a huge mystery that'll be solved through the game's plot. Outside of that, there is not much else that we know about V because at the end of the day, the player is V. When the game starts, you'll get to customize your history. And from there, you create your own story by playing through the game in whatever manner you want. You can be the shonen anime hero who's always fighting for what's right. Or you can do what I'm planning to do and run Night City. City. These megacorps are wildin', these gangs are wildin', conscience ruling this bitch. Everything's gonna be in order cause y'all niggas out here being crazy. As for what you can expect from the game, plot-wise the virus Soul Killer has returned, and both megacorps and violent gangs are still fighting for control of Night City. As V, you may end up working with or against these gangs and megacorps, depending on what path you take in the game. When it comes to gameplay, the gameplay is completely in the first person. Now I thought this was gonna be kinda annoying when they first announced this change, but now I'm kinda excited about it. Yeah, you won't be able to see your character a lot since it won't be in third person, but the constant first person will really add to the immersion. I can feel like I'm really giving the hands when I'm out here giving the hands. 
Unlike the previous games, the way in which you build your character is free, meaning you won't have to choose a specific class when creating your character, so you can mess around with different skills that cater to different playstyles, and create your own playstyle off of that. This is what I'm really hyped for. There are so many different enhancements you can make to your body, and a bunch of different movement options in the game when in combat, so you can really go wild with this. I'm gonna try to bust in the game like my guy and show them the eight gates of smoke. Bro, you know how dangerous it is in a world full of guns? I'm coming in strapped. You playing. Now the game also goes in when it comes on how you can style in the world and cruise the streets of Night City. There are clothing brands with different styles that you can choose from. And from what they've showed, you can really flex. And the rides in the game are fire. You can choose to have a dope ass future car or a motorcycle that looks like it's straight from Cybertron. Shit's lit. And all that is only a taste of what Night City has to offer. There are so many things to do in this game. I mean, it was developed by The Witcher 3's creator CD Projekt Red after all. The game recently went gold, meaning we most likely won't have to worry about another change to the release date. So as of right now, Cyberpunk 2077 officially releases on November 19th of this year. And though multiplayer won't be available at launch, it is confirmed that multiplayer will be a thing for this game in the future. And that is the story behind Cyberpunk. Now you know pretty much everything you need to know to enjoy this world to the fullest once the game comes out. One thing that we forgot to mention is that a cyberpunk anime is also in the works. Looks like that's not coming anytime soon though, but we'll keep you updated on that. Let us know how excited you are for cyberpunk after hearing all this lore in the comments below. And with that being said, Ensley. Yo fam, thank you guys so much for watching this different type of Honest Gaming history. I thought about it and I was like, I don't wanna just do Honest Gaming history on the characters. I also wanna do it on stuff like this. Like maybe you wanna know the background of a story. Maybe you guys wanna know how a video game company became a thing. Maybe I'll do an Honest Gaming history on how Nintendo was developed. Who knows? This opens a whole new world of possibilities and I'm really happy to see what's gonna happen. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like. Let's see if we can get the video to a thousand likes in the next 24 hours. Subscribe if you wanna see more of me. Comment who else or what else you want to see me do on future episodes of Honest Gaming History. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of what I produce and hit that bell notification button because if you don't, you will never be updated on when I upload new videos. Shout out to Devlin08, Jakari Scott, Will Bruce, and all my other amazing patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to make videos like this. And if you are not already a patron but would like to become one, go to my Patreon page in the description below and find out how you can support the channel for only a dollar a month. And one of the perks you get with that is watching these videos earlier than anyone else. But yeah, that's all I got for now. So don't forget to follow me on my social media down below and watch another video either here or here. And yeah, I'm off this. So as usual, be easy, stay lit, take care, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the fuck you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.